Greetings to all these students. Uh, once again, we are here with biology and chemistry lessons. And today we have a chemistry class. Uh, yesterday we had a class on matter, properties of matter, solid, liquid, and gases. And this chapter today is about diffusion. And this topic diffusion is a very beginning topic. And it is usually along with uh, matter, solid, liquid, and gases. And so the students of class 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, they all have this topic in their uh, chemistry. So what is actually diffusion? Diffusion is the movement of the particles uh, only in gases and liquids. Solids do not diffuse. Why? Because solid particles, we have seen in the properties of matter that the solid particles are sticking up with each other by small uh, by strong in, uh, intramolecular forces of attraction. So they cannot run here and there. But in case of the liquids and case of the gases, there is little or no intramolecular force of attraction. So the particles are relaxed and they can easily run here and there. So diffusion is that type of the movement in which the particles are moving from the area of higher concentration. Uh, so you can see over here, high concentration towards low concentration. So what is the meaning of higher concentration? The area where the particles are more, they will go towards the area where the particles are less. It means at one place, if the particles of any gas or liquid are more high concentration and very less on the other side, so the particles will follow this direction. They will fly to the area where they are less. So diffusion is actually nothing but a spreading movement of the particles and they try to fill up the entire area. They will try to fill them up in the entire area till the two concentrations become equal. The movement, the diffusion of the particles keep on taking place till the two areas become equal in concentration. So this is a very common example when you walk past by uh, the garbage site, uh, you can feel the smell of the garbage. Why? Because the, the smell which is coming out, the chemicals which are coming out of the garbage, these chemicals are actually diffusing from the area where they are more. So where they are more? Inside the garbage box. And they are diffusing to the area where they are less. So they are actually filling up the whole surface, everywhere, entire surface. And eventually they will touch the receptor cells in your nose and you can feel the bad smell. This is one of the examples of diffusion. The another example of diffusion is the air freshener or deodorant or spray when you open the bottle and when you spray, you can feel the smell. Why? Because inside the bottle of the perfume, uh, this is the high concentration area. And when you spray it, the molecules come out from the area of higher concentration and they will start spreading in the area of lower concentration. And eventually these, this chemical uh, hits our uh, receptor cells inside the nose and we can smell them. This is another example of diffusion. This is third example of the diffusion. Uh, we can smell the smell of the food. How? Because the, the smell which is coming out of the food, this is the high concentration area. So the smell is coming and filling up all the space everywhere, filling up and eventually uh, touching the uh, receptor cells in the nose and we can feel the smell of the good food or whatever the smell we can feel. So it is actually taking place by the process of diffusion. You can see this picture. In this picture, we can see that the perfume uh, or the air freshener when we spray in a room, so this is the room and the room is filled up with the air particles. So these green color particles are the air particles and you can see there are large intermolecular spaces in between the air molecules. Why? Because air is a mixture of gases. So when you spray the air freshener, these particles, they fly and they, they move in, the, in between the intramolecular spaces. And you can see in the second picture that how these particles of the air freshener or the per they have evenly distributed themselves in the entire room. They have spread themselves uniformly. And now in this room, you cannot see any difference in the concentration. Everywhere, the concentration of the, uh, the molecules of the perfume 
is equal everywhere so those who are sitting near the perfume those who are sitting far away from the perfume everyone can smell the perfume why because the particles have evenly distributed themselves in the entire room and they are now in between the intramolecular spaces of the air molecules this is how the diffusion process is taking place what happens when the particles evenly distribute themselves and there is no difference in the concentration left what will happen after that after that the particles will not follow a particular direction before the particles were moving from the area of higher concentration to the area of lower concentration and now when there is no difference in the concentration everywhere the particles have uniformly distributed themselves now the particles will just move in a haphazard zigzag way like this suppose this is one particle so this particle will move in a straight line and will hit another particle this particle will bounce back and will hit another particle so in this way the particles will move in a zigzag haphazard way hitting each other hitting the wall of the container hitting the ceilings hitting the floor hitting the wall coming back and again hitting each other and bouncing back this motion this particular type of the motion is called brownian motion so brownian motion is given uh, the name is given after the name of a botanist whose name was robert brown so robert brown has discovered this thing that the particles in the gases and the liquids they will move in a haphazard random zigzag way in straight lines it is not like that the particles are moving in a wave like motion like this no this particle hit another particle so this particle will hit the particle against it then this particle will hit another particle so this way they will keep on moving in zigzag haphazard way in straight lines so once particles will diffuse properly evenly distribute themselves everywhere then they will not follow any particular direction then they will just randomly move in a zigzag haphazard way and that is called brownian motion <clears throat> now see how diffusion is taking place in the liquids in liquids also diffusion takes place so you can see here that uh, this is a chemical compound and the name of this chemical compound is potassium permanganate the formula is kmno4 so we will drop few drops a uh, few crystals of potassium permanganate in a container of water and we will see that how this potassium permanganate is diffusing all around in the container and eventually the entire water will become pink in color but it will take some time it is not going to take place instantly it will take place some time so you can see that how it is taking place from the area of higher concentration to the area of lower concentration so uh, once the particles evenly distribute themselves and then they will randomly move in a zigzag haphazard way which is called brownian motion uh what is the difference in between the uh, diffusion in between liquids and gases so in case of liquids the diffusion is taking place slowly in case of gases it is taking place faster the reason is that in case of gases there are large intermolecular spaces for example uh, these are the molecules of the gas they are they have got large intermolecular spaces and when you will spray the air freshener the air freshener particles can quickly uh run or fly in between these intramolecular spaces but in case of the liquids the particles have got little gaps in between them as compared to the gases so the incoming particles of potassium permanganate or any colored substance will have little bit difficulty in moving in between the crowd that's why the diffusion process in liquids is slow and in gases it is faster the best example we can give here is suppose there is a room and the room is uh, this is a hall and here there is one door entrance and here it is exit you will enter from here and you will leave from this door suppose in this room there are so many chairs and people are sitting on the chairs like this all right and you have to uh, enter from one side and leave from another side so what you will do you will have some little bit of difficulty in moving uh, in between the crowd 
in between the chairs you will have some you will take some time you will make your way and then you will come out but suppose in the room there are few chairs here and there one chair is here another here third is here and you have to get inside and leave the room so it will become how easy it, it will be for you to run from this end to this end so the this is the case of the gases and this is the case of the liquids in liquids the molecules are you know closely arranged they have got little gaps in between them so the incoming particles have to face some difficulty in moving in between the particles and then they can exit but in case of the gases there are large intermolecular spaces so the incoming molecules of the perfume or air freshener or any bad smell will take no time to reach or you can say to spread in the whole room so this is the reason that why diffusion in liquids is slow and diffusion in gases is very fast you you just give one uh, one uh, puff of the air freshener in the room and within no time everyone can smell it why because so fast the the chemical uh, which was there in the air freshener it will spread in the room evenly and then the molecules will just randomly move in a haphazard zigzag way in straight lines which is called brownian motion this is one of the experiments we usually find in the book in igcse 921 book also there is this experiment uh, so what is this experiment about this experiment is about uh, this is jar a which is empty empty means it has got air inside it and this is jar b and we have taken some liquid bromine inside it bromine is a red color liquid and this bromine gives out red color vapors red color bromine gas but there is a lid in between so the red color is only in the lower jar the the gas the red color gas only is in the lower jar then what you will do you will take away the lid and then you will see both of the jars will be evenly uh, filled up with the red color bromine gas what is the reason the bromine gas will start moving from the area of higher concentration to the area of lower concentration that is the movement of the bromine gas will be from a to from b to a from b to a the particles will move from b to a and they will fill up the entire space and once they will fill up the entire space then they will randomly move in a haphazard zigzag way in straight lines so this is one of the experiments uh, sometimes for one mark or two marks uh, this question uh, very rare it comes in the exams in the o level exams now we will see what we have next uh, what are the factors affecting the rate of diffusion what is the meaning of the of the word rate the meaning of the word rate is how fast something is taking place so number one factor is temperature at a high temperature what happens the particles gain kinetic energy the kinetic energy of the particles increases at a high temperature and when the particles have got more kinetic energy they will start moving faster so diffusion takes place faster at high temperature than at low temperature concentration gradient what is concentration gradient difference in the concentration at one place the particles of a liquid or a gas are too much more and very little on the other side then they will spread very fast but if one side the particles are more and the other side the particles are more or less same same number same amount then the diffusion will become slow very slow so the the greater the difference in the concentration in between the two areas the higher will be the rate of diffusion for example if there is already someone has sprayed air freshener in a room and uh, next moment you will come and you will again spray the air freshener what will happen will there be any difference everyone will be able to smell the same smell because the room is already filled up with the air freshener the room has already the particles and you have added more particles so those particles the incoming particles which you have sprayed they will become they will take some time to move because the room is already filled up with air freshener so there is little difference in the concentration this is the reason that the incoming particles will move slowly but if there is no air freshener in the room you come and you spray the air freshener then everyone will be able to smell within no time in the blink of an eye why because in the room there was no air freshener 
there is a large difference in concentration. You have spread and quickly in no time the particles have spread themselves. Now, the third difference is the mass of the particles. Common sense, higher the mass, heavy particles will move slowly. Fat, part, fat people, uh, they can they run slowly. Thin people can run fast. Similarly, fat molecules, they, dif they diffuse slowly. And the, 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 the particles which have got less mass, they will diffuse faster. This is another experiment in the book and it is a very important experiment. It sometimes comes in the exam. And what this experiment is about, this experiment says that there is a glass tube. This experiment is actually about lighter particles diffuse faster than the heavy particles. We are going to prove this thing. So what we have taken, we have taken a glass tube. So this is the glass tube. And at one corner of the glass tube, you have taken a cotton dipped in ammonia solution. NH3 solution and uh, the other corner there is a cotton dipped in a concentrated hydrochloric solution HCl hydrochloric acid we have closed the two ends so that the molecules will may not diffuse this way so now what will happen the molecules will diffuse out from the hydrogen hydrochloric acid from hydrochloric acid hydrogen chloride gas diffuse out and it is moving in this direction, high to low concentration. Similarly, from the cotton of ammonia, the ammonia gas molecules are diffusing in this direction from high to low. The cotton is the high concentration area and the rest of the tube is the low concentration area and the particles are moving. These particles are also moving. And at one place, what will happen that these two particles, they will hit each other. And when they will hit each other, a chemical reaction will take place. So this is the place where they hit each other. So what chemical reaction will happen? Ammonia gas. I'm writing a small g under it, showing that it is a gas. Is reacting chemically when they when it hits hydrogen chloride gas molecules, and they are forming a very new compound, ammonium chloride (NH4Cl), which is a white color solid. So where this white color solid will go, it will stick inside the glass tube. And since the glass tube is rounded, so we will see as if a ring has formed. If the glass tube was a square in shape, then a square shaped thing was formed. So the white color ring has formed, not in the middle, not near ammonia, but the white color ring has formed near HCl. What does it prove? What does it show? It shows that HCl gas molecules are heavier. So they have diffused slowly and they have reached only up to this much. Ammonia gas molecules are very light. So they have diffused very fast and they have covered a large distance. And they, have, they are meeting with each other at this point. And as a result, the ring is formed near HCl. How do we know that HCl molecules are heavier and uh, ammonia gas molecules are lighter? We can easily calculate the atomic masses, all right? Uh, we can easily add up the uh, individual atomic masses in HCl. For example, HCl, the atomic mass of hydrogen is 1 and chlorine is 35.5. So one molecule of HCl has a mass of 36.5. Now see this ammonia, NH3. One molecule of nitrogen is 14. Uh, one atom of nitrogen has an atomic mass of 14 and one atom of hydrogen has an atomic mass 1 multiplied by 3 and that is equivalent to 17. It means one molecule of ammonia gas has a mass of 17 whereas one molecule of HCl has a mass of 36.5. So who has got more mass? 36.5 HCl. This is the reason that HCl is moving slowly because it is fat. It has more mass and ammonia molecules are moving very fast because they are very slim. They have got less mass and they are meeting with each other near HCl and making a white color ring. Now, we can do this experiment in different conditions and can see uh, the formation of the ring. For example, if we do this experiment uh, in a hot day when the temperature is, let's say, 38 degrees Celsius. 
we will measure we will note down the time when the ring will appear and then we will take this glass tube and do this experiment all over again in an ac room where the temperature is 15 degrees celsius and we will measure the time so we will see that at high temperature the ring is forming very quickly at low temperature it is taking some time for the ring to appear what is the reason at high temperature the particles have got high kinetic energy so they are moving very fast and hitting each other and making a ring whereas at low temperature the kinetic energy is very less so they are moving very slowly and take time to meet with each other all right another thing is that uh, if you will take a small tube like this tube is a very big tube if i take this much a small tube and i will do this experiment then within no time the ring will form why because there is a very less distance the particles have to cover so the shorter the distance the quickly they will be able to cover the distance so these type of the questions come in the exam like the questions which can come in the exam they can ask you they will not give you the ring and they will ask you to draw a ring where the ring will form so you have to see where is hcl if hcl is this side if hcl is this side so the ring will form near hcl somewhere over here so they will ask you to draw a ring or it might happen that the ring is already there and they have marked it x and they will ask you to write down the name and the formula of the ring so the name of the ring is ammonium chloride ammonium chloride and the formula is nh4cl then they can ask you to write down the chemical equation for the chemical reaction taking place when the ring is formed so this is the chemical equation you are going to write nh3 plus hcl nh4cl sometimes in order to confuse uh, the students uh, they can change the places like they can fix uh, nh3 this side they can fix nh3 this side uh, sorry hcl this side and nh3 this side and then they will ask you to draw the ring then where you will draw the ring near hcl not just the diagram says that the ring is here so always i will draw the ring here no we will see which substance is taken at which place then they can ask you that instead of hcl hydrochloric acid if we take hbr hydrobromic acid hbr then what will be the result hbr is heavier than hcl so what does it mean the ring will form much closer than hbr because hbr molecules are much heavier than hcl molecules so they will slow they will diffuse more slowly and by that time ammonia molecules will run and reach here so instead of hcl if you are taking hbr instead of hydrochloric acid if you are taking hydrobromic acid then the ring will form much closer to hbr side than the uh, then the ring has formed in hcl side so this is all about this experiment uh, this is the real life experiment you can see how it is taking place this is the glass tube and you can see how we are we are saying that the ring is formed so actually the ring is formed in this way it is just like a white color is smoke coming out from ammonia and from hcl and the the ring is formed over here so you can see this distance is smaller and this distance is larger it means over here we have taken ammonia so ammonia has covered a great distance faster and here it was hcl so since it is heavier so it has covered a small distance and so the ring is formed near hcl side i hope you have understood this experiment uh, that's all for today children i hope you have enjoyed the class if you have any queries you can write in the comment bye bye see you in the next class